Previously on this little series we call Making Home, I decided on a design plan for this front entryway slash fireplace makeover. Oh my god, are you kidding? <laughs> Here's the mock-ups of what that paint color with that tile could look like. I picked a new tile, but when I removed the old tile, I found the original brick underneath. That's kind of cool. Unexpected turn of events. Which got me thinking, is there gold hidden on the inside of the fireplace too? I might regret that. I honestly most likely will regret this. There was no gold, but there was brick. And what I thought was mold, but it wasn't mold, so that's okay, we can move on. Rochelle started testing different color options in order to dye my chair. And I painted my fireplace what I thought was gonna be a base coat of the new paint color. Can I just say, don't hate this color. And all of this while I waited for my tile order to be ready. Thank you to Teachable for sponsoring a portion of this video. Anyways, if it wasn't obvious, I'm on my way this morning to pick up my tile order for the hearth of my fireplace. Let me give you a little hack when picking up tile. If you happen to have a non-solid trunk like me, aka you can like lift up this very flimsy, like basically felted cardboard, and there's like a hollow space underneath for a tire or even more hidden storage, then do not put a heavy box of tile or other stone on this because you may end up denting or compromising this piece in some way. So take it from me, put this on maybe the floor of your vehicle or just a more solid area that doesn't have a hollow space underneath. It's all fine, but at one point I was worried it wasn't fine. This is from the um, alabaster video. Else, let me know. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. See you. Keep in touch. Will do. So the tile I went with is this mosaic. Now I haven't seen what you guys said in the comments, but something tells me everybody would have voted for checkered just because that's the trendiest thing but i feel like this will stand the test of time and kind of go with whatever design me or the future person wants to do with this fireplace so i think right now i need to figure out my rough layout before i can start cutting pieces and gluing it down actually wait what am i talking about i need to paint the inside of this fireplace first because i do not want to get paint on my new tile. So let's quickly uh, tint this, shall we? So my plan here is to take a dark black, brown, gray color. I actually have some samples left over from picking my kitchen cabinet color. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of paint with a little bit of water in order to make a tint in the hopes that some of the grout and brick tones can still show through, but overall, when you look at the fireplace, you just see dark black. I've never done this before, so I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I feel like that's working exactly how I want it to. With the inside brick and grout tinted dark, I'm gonna leave this for now. I don't know if I'll need to come back to this, but I'm gonna start dry fitting all of the tile. In order for all this tile to fit properly in the space, I have a lot of cuts to make using my cutoff tool. I'm making sure to keep the tile wet with a sponge as I go in order to avoid any chipping or cracking. So I now understand why mosaic can be more expensive to install because instead of a few large cuts, if I was doing a bigger tile, it's a bunch of small cuts. <laughs> to do all these edges and make sure everything was exactly the right size, it took me about three days, a few hours every day to get that all done. So now that I have the dry fit in place, 
and it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. I am back to the paint color on the fireplace and I think I wanna stick with my original plan and get it copper because right now it's just not doing it for me. And I think I wanna do that before I tile. It'll just be a lot cleaner that way. So let's get this out and let's copperify this fireplace. So I'm gonna be using metallic accents in bronze and I don't wanna put this on like I would regular paint because then it'll be a little bit too opaque. I'm gonna try different techniques of like rubbing it on, cross hatching it on with a brush because I do want some of this orange to show through. So it is a little bit lighter than just this solid brown color. So I wanna let you know what's going through my head while I paint. And it's that I can't decide whether I should put back up the original mirror or maybe go for something different like a piece of art. Meanwhile, I've been at the studio attempting to dye Kelsey's chair the perfect shade of green. Both Kelsey and Elliot liked the olive green tone that I had formulated, so I tested out a couple different application methods and settled on brushing it on. I didn't know what would happen, so I tested the dye on the underside of the chair first. It ended up drying lighter than I was hoping, so I made a new batch that was the same ratio, but double the strength. If you'd like to know, it was actually 40 milliliters of Kelly Green, 320 milliliters of tan, and 500 milliliters of hot water, with a little bit of dish detergent and a little bit of salt. Before putting on the dye, I spritzed the chair with water to hopefully make the fabric more accepting of the dye. I brushed it on and it's going on such a gorgeous shade of olive that I am optimistic that she is gonna love it. Project. This is Elliot's favorite Instagram account, but it's also a like boutique magazine and they released a book I think based on their first 10 issues. Oh my god. So I don't know if it's all 10 issues in one or just pretty photos or what. But. It's just like beautiful, mostly Australian and New Zealand homes. Such a little architecture baby. It's all places I can ever afford. Something Elliot and I have in common. Oh good. Is it just a lot of pretty photos? I was hoping it wasn't too many articles. Oh my god, are there any articles? I'm okay if there's not. These places are all insane. I mean, come on, look at that. Right? Not bad. They're all like indoor, outdoor, floor ceiling windows, wood. Ooh, I love. Now we have his and hers coffee table books. They're so similar. I know. Couldn't have gotten a little less beige in here. No? Okay. This is where we'll be pulling inspo when we um, have an architect make our house in like a decade? A decade. What? Two decades. <laughs> yeah, with that attitude. thoughts on the copper because I love it. I know copper or bronze is really just shiny brown, but <laughs> I think it's so cool. I'm so curious to hear what you guys think though. You can tell me if you don't like it, that's fine. Uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, so today is the day that, I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for. It's time to install this tile. I didn't realize how much prep work it would be to just get it ready to install, but now it's ready and I just have to make sure that it's like level and looks good and I'm gonna say that I am nervous just because I don't have a lot of room for the glue, but it'll be okay. So the key to this is really just finding the middle and I already previously found the middle, but I'm gonna mark it on some tape since I'm obviously not gonna be able to see the floor once I start gluing. So this tile adhesive I found at the studio, it looks like no one's ever used it, but it is a little dry on the top, so I'm just gonna have to scrape that off, I guess. This 
This is very intimidating, guys. The hard part about this is that there's actually a slope, kind of, which is not ideal, and I'm just gonna try to make it work. This is where I should have a laser level, but I don't. If you're wondering why I'm not putting a real fireplace or any type of fireplace in my fireplace, um, that's a good question. It's actually one of the first things I asked myself when I started thinking about this fireplace makeover. I was like, do I want a wood burning fireplace? Do I want a gas fireplace? Do I want an electric fireplace? And the reason I didn't make it a wood burning fireplace is that A, I know myself and I know I'm not gonna like light up a fire that would be cool and aesthetic, but I just can't see myself doing that. And then also I know I wouldn't be able to use a fun tile like this because it would have to be like fire grade. I wouldn't even be able to tile. I'd probably have to do like a brick or something. And I did want this to be like an aesthetic focal point. Not to mention your insurance goes up and the cost in order to get this regulated was a cost I was not willing to take on. And then it came to do I want a gas or an electric fireplace? Short answer is like, yeah, I do want the fire vibe because that's such a vibe. But the thing about gas is that that's gonna be expensive to hook up. And again, I can't get the aesthetic tile because now it'd be this like insert, which I think would take up more room than is actually in here. It would give me nice fire vibes, but it wouldn't look great. And electric, you can get them a little bit smaller so it might be able to fit in the space I currently have. But the problem with those is that I just have not found an electric fireplace that I like the look of. I just think they do look a little bit faux. And the ones that don't look faux are the like vapor ones, if you've seen those, but then those are really expensive. So at the end of the day, I was like, I know I just want something kind of aesthetic. The fireplace vibe would be sick, but also I like this vibe. And if I put a fireplace insert in here, I wouldn't get a vibe unless there was a fire going. And honestly, I just didn't know how often that would be. Winter months, great. Summer months, meh. So, but I, I think I'm happy with my decision. I mean, so far. Even though, not gonna lie, I'm really stressed right now. Am I hiding it well? <laughs> I don't know. Tile more or less fun than you thought it would be? Mm, less fun. Why is it missing squares in the middle? Oh! Did you? Put oh, I put it in backwards. <laughs> hey, is there anything I can eat? Yeah, there's biryani. Or do you mean you want me to cook you your fish? No, you don't. Because I don't have time. I mean, I could throw it in the oven in like three seconds, but I don't expect much. So I'm about halfway done and it does go very fast, but I honestly am just so stressed. And although the glue or adhesive doesn't dry super fast, it is kind of dried where I've already put it down. So I feel like I can't stop, even though my lunch is ready. <laughs> Elliot was making his lunch and I was like, can you just throw in my fish that's in the fridge in my head? No seasoning, no, nothing special, like literally fish pan in oven. Excuse me? <laughs> Yo, I'm lucky, and I know it. I know I'm lucky. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's him not cooking. So annoying. He's annoyingly good. <laughs> Anyways, I think I'm gonna have to let that get cold because I, I, feel, I feel like I need to finish this. Do I have an option? the work while you eat lunch person, which is, I know, not a great practice, but I'm reviewing photos sent in from students that have taken our Ultimate Room Makeover course, and seeing the results is just so exciting. If you haven't heard, we launched a course earlier this year. It's a take at your own pace course that we actually launched with Teachable, which serendipitously is today's sponsor. 
Becky and I felt that after 12 plus years of making content online in the DIY and interior design space, that we had so much knowledge to share and we just wanted to package it in a clear and informative way for anybody that was looking to do a room makeover in a sustainable and budget friendly and just easy way. Easy process only. We chose Teachable as our backend course host because we wanted a platform that looked professional, that would let us use the Sora Girls branding, that was easy for you, the student, to navigate, but also easy for us to set up and run smoothly. Teachable is a no-code platform where you can create and host your own course. Let me know in the comments if you're a creator, and it doesn't even have to be like a video creator, just maker, creator, seller of any kind, and maybe we can use the comment section as a little self-promo area. But being a creator ourselves, creating this course has opened up a new revenue stream for us, which I just think is so important when running a business that you have multiple revenue streams so that you can weather any storm and have a stable business. Kind of helps me sleep well at night, you know? So if you ever want to add an income stream or you're curious about making a course, Teachable now has AI tools to help you with your content creation. So if you're not exactly sure where to start, the platform will help you with three simple steps to start your journey. There are so many different ways to utilize Teachable from a video course like ours, or you can do something like coaching, or even just utilizing digital downloads and not even having a video element. To get started, you'll wanna click the link in the description down below and use our code TSG2023 for one month of free access to your pro plan on Teachable. Honestly, it was quite a full circle moment when Teachable reached out to partner with us on video because we made our course in Teachable. It's just too perfect. Thank you again for Teachable for sponsoring this portion of the video. I'm gonna finish my lunch and then let's get back to this makeover. So as you guys know, Rochelle was working on dyeing that chair for me. What? <gasps> She's here with the chair. I've been told it may have not gone as planned, so that's where my expectations are. Hi. I, here, I'll let you bring it in. Okay. Why do you sound so upset? The corner is wet and I had three fans on it for two full days. Wait. Oh, it's so close. I know. <laughs> Wait, you got the color though. Oh, my I feel God. like the color is so perfect. It was, oh. it was so much, and it was so close so many times, and then yeah. like, I would do something and it would change, or like, yeah, yeah, you know? You know, these are chemical reactions, what can we do? <laughs> so there is one section on it that is absolutely ruined. What do you mean? Okay, if you see here, there was a, a whole, moment okay where it was dyed and i was like let me test this color fixative that they have it's just supposed to help fix in the color right yeah, okay and i put it on the bottom where we were testing everything <gasps> it's like straight yellow and i like was wiping it off and i'm like okay it doesn't really seem to be doing anything so i'm like let me just test it a little bit on the side where i can see it <laughs> <laughs> how is that more yellow <laughs> And I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm not gonna continue on with this, right? I was like, we gotta rinse it. So Anne and I took it out in the backyard. Get your phone. Nothing is coming out. Turns out the hose is broken. Oh yes, yes. yes. <laughs> We're throwing buckets of water on it. So then we, yeah, we wrapped it up in a tarp and I took it home for the weekend. Okay, so this chair's been through it. You've been through it. I somehow, I don't, dislike it as much as you prepared me to dislike <laughs> it. It actually is weirdly kind of a vibe because the color's right. Yeah. It looks like watermelon skin. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Streaks? Oh my God, it's giving watermelon rind. Rochelle, you nailed it. <laughs> if so I flip fishy. it over, is it gonna be pink underneath? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was such a hassle for you. Hey, in other news, that looks gorgeous. <laughs> That was still a journey though. And you don't, you can't look close. <laughs> As with most DMs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Rochelle just left. And although the chair did not turn out the way we are both expecting, 
I don't hate it, hate it, and it's definitely gonna hang out in here for a little while. And I have been eyeing this ottoman on Facebook Marketplace, and it's like the same color, and it's gonna work well, I think, in this space. It's a little bit more lime green than I'm usually going for, but I think my style is just every shade of green and earth tones. That's, that's what we're going for here. Also, there's a piece of art from Partial, which is a place where you can rent or buy art from local artists. I've used them before, not sponsored. Investing in local art can be expensive, but also so exciting. And Elliot really loves the piece, which is good because we don't always agree on art. I don't think you would expect this type of art for me. So I'm curious for you to see it, but it's gonna work well with our green color we have going on and it's gonna be unexpected. That's for tomorrow. Final touches are happening tomorrow. We have a few more things to do while I wait for this tile adhesive to dry. I wanna to get to grouting, but I think I really need to let it dry before I get to grout. So I'm gonna work on the light. I actually picked up a light on Facebook Marketplace a little while back and I'm gonna swap it out. There's just something about the current light that it's like almost too small for the space, I feel like. And although I did play it safe with the new light fixture, the new light fixture has a little bit more character, barely, <laughs> right? Like sleek, but kind of cool. It's also kind of like an elevated boob light. Can't unsee it now. Also, there's literal wasps in there right now. Did I turn off the breaker? Did I turn off the breaker? Did I turn off the breaker? I don't wanna die. Blech. Blech. Oh, that one wasn't a wasp. I always put up the ground first to use it as like a support wire. Oh, I like it though. Hold for breaker. Listen, I understand this might not be for everybody and in some ways it looks like I'm stepping backwards in design because in some ways it's a little bit less modern, but I like it. I like the color, I like the glass, and it's a little bigger, which feels right for the scale of the space. Wait, did I dye my hair to match my fireplace? Ah! Frig. I feel like that's something about me that I need to talk to a therapist about. Anyways, okay, so I need to wait 24 hours for this tile adhesive to dry. When the tiler was doing my kitchen, he tiled and grouted in the same day, and I was like, oh my god, I can tile and grout in the same day. No, I can't because I didn't use the quick set, which is, Definitely for the better, but there's quick set adhesive of which it'll take like two hours and then you can grow. I did not use that. I needed to wait for this to fully dry. So here I am, my tile fully dried and now it's time to grow. I love the way this is looking, but also I'm still nervous because I don't know. I feel like things can still go wrong. So let's just whip together some grout and grout this thing. Cause I want to be done. <laughs> so we're supposed to let this sit for 15 minutes, but while we do that, I just need to tell you that this is a really good investment if you don't have one for your drill. You attach this bit to like a standard drill and you can use it for plaster, for concrete, for grout. It just makes it so much easier. And then make sure that you're like getting all of your products. You don't have like clumpy dry bits at the end. That's all. Oh, I guess while I wait, I can also pick out all of those little tile divider pieces. But also just so you know, you can reuse those. You really only need to buy a pack of tile spacers once because then you can just keep reusing them. I think the hardest part about this is gonna be not getting it on the brick. Like I actually don't have a game plan for that. I'm also so nervous because I love it. I think this tile choice was elite. I'm proud of myself. Okay, let's start easy. Oh, oh! So I do know my tile's a little uneven. That looks good though. Okay, it's just gonna be hard to get 
the unevenness. I think it looks even better now. It's finally time to put the final touches on this room. The fireplace tile and grout looks pretty good, if you ask me. And remember how we're talking about the mirror going back up, the mirror not going back up? Well, I have a piece of art that we're gonna do instead of the mirror. So the mirror I actually previously found at the ReStore, and it was like originally $1,200 from like a designer store here in Toronto. I think I got it for 300, but after a while, I realized that they used the wrong type of mirror glue. So you can see that it was actually disintegrating some of the mirror backing and it was, you could see where they put the glue, which is really unfortunate. I know some people might not have been able to see it. I could not not see it. And I also do think it was a little too large for this fireplace, kind of overtook the space. So it's in the garage, but what I have here is my new art. It's called Prometheus Torn Apart, and Elliot actually really likes dark and dramatic art, and I do not. So this is kind of the perfect combo because the imagery is like a little dark with the bodies going at each other, but the colors, the flowers, like that keeps it light. So I think it's a beautiful combination. We're gonna hang this up on the fireplace, but it does need a frame. Michelle made this frame with quarter inch wood and we've done a few different frames around here. If you guys want a video on making a simple frame, I think we could all benefit from that. So let me know in the comments down below and maybe that's something Michelle can whip up for us. This frame is really simple to slide on and it's stained to match the fireplace and the other wood tones in my space. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my God, I love this color of wood. So now you see why I was thinking this ottoman from Facebook Marketplace was gonna be perfect. It has the same green tones. And I really wanted this piece because I feel like it'll make this space purposeful and like grounded without a rug, because I tried the rug. Didn't like the rug. I actually weirdly really don't really like the feet. I feel like the extra space is bringing my eye down to the shadow under it. And I kind of just want it to really meld in with the ground. Like the vision was like low ottoman. I think I'm gonna take the feet off this and see what that looks like if it's like a really low ottoman. I'm attaching these little hammer on feet just to make sure nothing scratches the floor. I, this guy has no, I was recording. It's lunchtime. It's lunchtime. <laughs> what? I gotta eat. Yeah. I was like, I had a line to say. One line. <laughs> okay, I know it looks like we're basically there, but there are some fu Sir, like literally, <laughs> stop. I have one sentence to say, and then you can make all the noise. <laughs> I know it seems like we're basically done, but I do have a few final touches in mind to pull this place together. <laughs> okay, this, I don't know if you guys remember this, but this is one of my favorite simple, simple DIYs that I use all the time to have Kleenex boxes. Should definitely try making one of those. And then also this blanket. I thrifted it forever ago. I was asking somewhere on the internet how to get rid of the smoke smell. I did a pretty good job and it's just so beautiful that I'm ready to have it out and get it out of the closet.
And if you're wondering what Elliot thinks, he likes it, he's unsure on the ottoman, and he hates the light. But he loves everything else, including the fireplace color, the tile work, and definitely the art. That's his favorite part. It's like his new baby. It's kind of weird. Oh yeah, and also, Rochelle and I are kind of into the chair now. What do you guys think? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this makeover. If you're wondering where the games went that were inside the fireplace, I know I removed some storage, but I kind of just put them upstairs in the media slash music room, which does need a makeover soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that because it desperately needs one. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. If you stay to the end of this video, I think you'll like my episode where I make over my favorite room in my house. That's my spa bathroom makeover. How do I not be the messiest right now? If I get paint on my clothes, I'm gonna... Ooh! Ooh!